Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is Patrick Evans Hilton with Virginia Eats and Drinks, and welcome to, uh, what do we call this? Crazy culinary questions with cocktails. Maybe I've had one too many today. I don't know. It is it is Friday, isn't it? Oh, wait a minute. No, it's Saturday. Oh, my goodness. Well, anyway, it's all this COVID-19 calendar stuff. So what do we know? I don't know. What do you know? I don't know. But I do know we're going to have the best half hour that is to be had, at least for right now and right here on Facebook Live. We love doing this on Tuesdays and Saturdays. It is crazy culinary questions with cocktails. I want to read a few things to you to go ahead and uh, let you know what we're doing here. This is part of Nautic Festival's Stay at Home event series. The series is designed to bring you a wide variety of family-friendly entertainment to the comfort of your own home. Uh, you can find out more information about that on festevents.org. That's festevents.org. Um, if you are enjoying this series and you're in the position to help the cause financially, because many people don't realize that Festivus is actually a nonprofit organization, and we know that with all this craziness going on, that we've been missing so many of those wonderful festivals. We've been missing Harbor Fest and Bayou Boogaloo and the Spring Wine Festival. So if you're in the position to help financially, whether it's a dollar, whether it's two dollars, whether it's ten dollars, twenty-five dollars, whatever, please head to the link in the description. We're going to be putting this in um, uh, down below when we finish up this. Um, this video here but um, you can go to the PayPal fundraising campaign every little bit counts and they are tremendously uh, grateful for any contribution so hello Lisa Jenke it's good to see you so um, if you've joined us before you know how this works we're gonna have a couple of cocktails I want to know what you're drinking because it is Saturday night and uh, we know that we're probably all at home and we're not gonna be out on the roads which is great so we can have a cocktail or two and enjoy that responsibly. Hello, Donnie Tester. It's good to see you. And um, I'm going to share with you what I'm enjoying uh, cocktail-wise. And then we're going to ask just um, some crazy culinary questions. You can ask me whatever you want to know. Uh, I can help you out. Maybe you've got some questions about how to stretch the dollar right now. Um, you know, with something, maybe you have some leftovers or maybe you have some other questions about some cocktails or wine or beer. Uh, or maybe you want to share with... Uh, with me some of the things that you're doing uh, maybe some restaurant uh, that you're you're finding uh, now that you're ordering out or something like that but one of the things hello Pat Steele it's good to see you here honey so one of the things I want to share with you is something that I made um, on you know I do a segment on Coast Live I'm so fortunate to have a wonderful relationship with my friends at WTKR News Channel 3 here in Norfolk um, and so I'm so uh, happy to uh, to be doing that. I'm actually going to be on this upcoming Monday. I'm on about every other uh, Monday with them. And so uh, a couple of weeks ago, I actually hello Sean Pepe. I got to get over to your restaurants over there, honey. I do love some. I do love the Dead Rise, uh, but I got to get over there um, and and find out uh, some of the great things that you're doing in some of those other restaurants over there. Chris Easton. Oh my gosh. Uh, a, uh, American Funds alumni there. But anyway, uh, hello, Chef uh, Jacoby Ponder. Uh, we're so lucky to have you in our area, not just because you're an outstanding person and a great guy, but the, uh, all the talent that you bring to the area, too, and the celebrity chef status that you have there, too. Um, so anyway, to make a long story short, a couple of weeks ago on Coast Live, I was starting to show how to do some different infused alcohols. And so three weeks ago, I started making this. Now, this is nothing but vodka. I made some vodka out of some really great vodka that my friend Carl Dorneman, who owns Reverend Spirits at uh, R.D. Wilhelm Distillery in, um, they call it Chelsea, but for God's sakes, it's West Ghent. Oh, please, I just can't go Chelsea stuff. I'm so sorry. But wherever, it's in Norfolk. And so uh, it's basically just the rind of a uh, lemon, the peel of a lemon. And so I've just been letting this sit in the freezer now. You only have to do it for three to five days, but oh, I wish we had smell that. Can you smell that? Mmm. Hello, Becky Stewart. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Dead Rise. Pat Still, Dead Rise is amazing. Oh, my God. I've been loving that for so long. So, now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to drink this just like it is. This is ice cold out of the freezer. And all it is is vodka 
and um, and then the lemon. So if you join me on Coast Live, but if you can't, then if you um, be sure that you follow me here on Facebook, and please, 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 we got to get to ten thousand uh, followers on um, the Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash Virginia Eats and Drinks. Please tell all your friends. I'd love to get to 10,000 by Monday, but I'm going to be posting the links and recipes and everything. We're going to make our own fireball whiskey on Monday. What about that? Fireball whiskey. We're going to make our own out of also those Reverend Spirits bourbon too. But look at this. I'm just going to be pouring this. Hello, Ahmed. It's good to see you. We're going to be pouring this in here. Ah, there's one two three i'm not driving four yeah there we go so look at that look at that in there oh yes lynn charles i love me some lynn charles how things going out there in surprising suffolk and so cheers to y'all i want y'all to post what you're enjoying as a cocktail as an adult libation because goodness knows there's not many fun things you can do as an adult. They really screwed us over as a kid, isn't there? They told us all these great things that we'd be able to free to be do, do as an adult. And so far, I can tell what I can do as an adult is to pay taxes and then have other people tell me even more unfun things I could do even as a child, too. So, huh, anyway. So, cheers. Oh, Cecilia Landris. I love me some Miss Landris. I can't call you anything but Miss Landris. I, she was one of my teachers at Parkview High School back in the 1980s. All I can say is Ronald Reagan was president. So cheers to all of my wonderful friends out there. Remember, this is part of the Nauvoo Festival Stay at Home event series. We're supposed to be asking questions, too. We already had one question asked off air. Um, so wait, well, i got to take a sip. Cheers to all of my friends out there. Oh. My gosh, that lemon, that just that pure, pure lemon. I can imagine making this with um, into a martini. I probably would cut it with a little just um, regular vodka, too, because it's so intensely strong. But, oh, my goodness, Stephen Gellis. Let me some Stephen Gellis. Miss your food. Oh, and Karen Cherberger, cheers, cheers. The queen of festivists, the reason that we're here tonight. And uh, we can't wait for everything to get back to to normal. I hate the phrase new normal. It's not the new normal. This all sucks. This just sucks. Let's just put it that way. There's nothing normal about this. It sucks. The only thing that's good about it is that I don't have anything on underneath the shirt that you see here. And I'm not going to show you because, you know. But um, the only thing is, is being able to be half naked and to be able to drink. Oh, Chad Martin, one of my favorite chefs of all times. Hello, Chad. Oh, of course, Pinky out. My God, you think I'm uncouth or something? Please. Mm. So post what you're enjoying. Remember, tune in to Coast Live, 10 o'clock on Monday. I'm going to be making, showing you how to make your own fireball, okay? But there'll be, there'll be everything on the Facebook group page. So please join. Tell others to join. So I did have, I'm going to scroll down. And I did have somebody ask a question earlier. My friend James Harmon. James went to culinary school here in Norfolk uh, at Culinary Institute of Virginia. I've known him, gosh, a long time now. He uh, lives up in Delaware. That kind of reminds me of the, what is it? I guess it's kind of a joke or um, cheers to you, Chuck. Uh, kind of a joke or kind of a little poem or something. But if Miss Ippy and Miss... Uri went to the fair, what a what with Delaware. She wear her New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, I need some I need something else to drink with that. Um, let's see here. So James said oh where where is James question here? Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Here we go. So James said many years ago I got a book called Final meals. Well, that kind of sounds a little ominous. That's something that a chef doesn't necessarily want to hear, isn't it? Final meals. My question to you is, what would be your final meal and who would you want it to be cooked by? Well, goodness gracious. Um, I guess my final meal... I don't want it simple. You know, I guess it also would be kind of, oh, Becky Stewart having vodka, chambord, and club soda. You go, girl. Um, I guess it kind of depends on how old you are, right? Because your final meal might actually be something that's just thrown in the blender and you're just kind of pureeing it, right? It also kind of depends on the mood that you're in because your final meal actually might resemble something like this. It might depend on how nostalgic you are because your final meal might be something that 
you grew up, Yanni. Hello, Yanni. Um, it's so good to see you. I love your wine shop over a great neck. Uh, can't wait to get back over there and to buy some really great wines uh, over there, too. We don't live very far from you. Um, but, um, you know, food is such a conduer, uh, conduit of, um, of time and space. We already have a time machine. They don't need to invent something that H.G. Wells has talked about. We already have one. It is food. And so a final meal, if you're still of sound mind and sound body to be able to actually choose something, I probably would pick something very, very simple from childhood. I wouldn't want something very elaborate. Um, I would probably want something maybe even comforting, like something from breakfast or something like that. Um, you know, maybe some scrambled eggs and some buttery grits and some raisin toast and uh, maybe some homemade sausage. Uh, something just, something very, very simple like that. Of course, there would have to be a cocktail. I didn't drink cocktails until I was 10 years old. But, um, you know, uh, something very simple. And who would I want to prepare it? Well, you know, I guess the cooks at the Waffle House would be good enough for me. I don't know. But certainly the folks over at Bay Local or Citrus could certainly do it. We've got, uh, oh, Cafe Stella. I know Stella's not watching right now. But no, you know, um, if she was still around, obviously my grandmother that, that raised me, Cynthia Graber. Hello, Cynthia. I'd have Cynthia prepare my last meal. That's it. That girl down in Georgia knows what she's doing around a pot and pan. I know that. So Cynthia could prepare my last meal. But things are. this is kind of taking a morbid tone here. We're not going to go anytime soon. And if we are, then God knows, you know, you know what do you do? But, um, you know... Food is to be celebrated. Food is to every part of every celebration in life, what, from the time that you're even before born to the time that you know you die and it's time for your wake service or something like that. So, um, but the most important thing about food is just enjoying something uh, every single day with somebody that you care about, even if that person that you care about is just yourself too. So I see Neil Bonus join us. Trey Barnum, what do we say? Two hot dogs with fixings. Oh, so this is what you have. Plain ruffle chips. You can't beat those ruffles. Oh, and oh, I love that. You know, I love that that um, Lingenkugels. Am I pronouncing that right? I Once time I actually flew to Minneapolis, uh, Milwaukee just to get some sausage um, or some, you know, some, some summer sausage and um, some cheese curds and some beer because I had enough miles on Delta. I just flew there and ate and turned around and came back. Isn't that silly? Especially now that we think about all, all the things that's going on now and all too. So everybody, we've heard from one person what you're enjoying for cocktail, but tell me what else you're enjoying. Ask your crazy questions. We've had some others. Now I know Karen Sherber asked me a question and I'm sorry I've been rambling on and on and on. Karen just planted an acre of basil. An acre of basil? Girl. You better check your measuring stick. Any fun cocktails to create with my crop? Well, girl, use the basil in some, some similar ways that you might actually want to be using. Hello, Tony Caruba. I love Luce. Folks, you need to check out Luce if you're in downtown Norfolk. And if you're not in downtown Norfolk, then carry your old, little tired butt down, down there and check them out, too. They're fabulous. Um, you know... Basil is actually a member of the mint family, and even though it does have a little bit more of, hello, Kevin, sorry, I hope things are doing good with you out there in Suffolk. Um, you know, it has, even though it has a little bit more of a savory component, you could use it in many ways that you could a mint. Uh, so maybe make like a, instead of a mint julep, maybe make a basil julep. I think that could actually be very fun. Use basil in a Bloody Mary. Um, you know, tear up some basil and just put it, maybe make an infused vodka with some basil. Um, you know, try, especially with some tomato-based, uh, drinks because, of course, tomato and basil have such a wonderful affinity with each other. Um, I think that you could really, uh, have a lot of fun with that. Trey Barnum, what's your favorite Virginia Rosé? Now, we don't really talk about favorites on here because I love so many things across the Virginia. My goodness, what a wonderful state we live in. Do you know what a wonderful state we have here? We've been eating and drinking since 1607 here, and we have such a wonderful variety of things to do. So what I am going to say is that there are you know, more than 300 wineries across the state. When I first moved to Virginia, now, I'm going to preference this because everybody knows the joke, don't you? The joke, you know, um, how many Virginians does it take to change a light bulb? It takes three. 
one to change the bulb and two to talk about how good the old bulb was and i am perfectly happy being a virginian my 10th great grandfather was john burris and he came in on the second supply ship at jamestown october 1st 1608 someplace along the way they went around and um you know ended up in north and uh down in the valley in north carolina and tennessee and all of that in north georgia uh, and i made my way back here but um so i'm proud to be a virginian but when i first moved back here 30 years ago there were only 12 uh wineries in virginia and uh now you know there's more than 300 so um you know um gosh uh, there there are so many wonderful uh wineries in the state um i would just say start exploring you know hello timothy patrick kendrick it's good to see you there can't wait to get back to hearth and have uh, and try uh, some of those wonderful creations from Chef Clint uh, over there and, and to see you and everything. Um, so, gosh, you know, there are just so so many fabulous, you know, rosés out there. I'm just, well, let me ask you, Trey, what, what's your current favorite of the, of, the, of the time? Let me ask you that. What, what are you, and what are you, and what are you drinking right now, Trey? Did you say what you were drinking earlier? Are you drinking a rosé right now? Because it is, it is really good rosé weather uh, right now, too. Well, maybe not today, because today kind of was chilly, wasn't it? Um, so, what, what Mother's Day plans do y'all have? What Mother's Day questions do you have? Y'all aren't asking very many questions tonight. There's a lot of folks watching right now, but y'all aren't asking very many questions. Is it that I'm talking too much? Maybe I've had a little bit of too much of this. Is there ever too much of this? Well, there is if you're going to go out and drinking and driving, of course, and we don't do that, but we're not driving right now. Cynthia Graber, if you're still watching, what's going on? What's going on with you? Oh, yes, Gabrielle Rousey. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and you are drinking that. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And Douglas Stisher's watching from the other room. I can see the top of his head from <laughs> where I'm sitting right now. Hold your hand up and wave, Doug. Oh, he's holding his hand up and waving. That's good. So, Cynthia, so you're really enjoying whiskey sours. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes, girl. Mm. I can't wait to see you again sometime. I was supposed to have already been back down to Atlanta a time or two. And, of course, I was supposed to pass through Atlanta on my way to Paris, too. But ah. So, Lisa, getting ready to spend Mother's Day with your son. That's awesome. He's cooking. Do you know what he's going to be cooking? And hello, Judy. Cheers to you, too, honey. Do you know what your son is cooking for you, Lisa? And so, Cynthia, tell me, too, what, how do you like your whiskey sours? What kind of whiskey do you like in it? Do you, just like, do you like bourbon? Do you like a rye? What, what do you like in it? And how sour do you like yours, too? I remember, oh, my gosh, I first had a sip of a whiskey sour when I was four years old. There was a little restaurant called Steak Manor that was on Glenwood Road in Atlanta, actually Decatur, and my um, father, um, if my grandmother would let him uh, my father would uh, because my father was a little still is a little you know he's one of those those southern uh, uh, characters that Truman Capone kind of would write about if you know what I mean and so my grandmother would occasionally let him have some alcohol out in public but you know anyway so but if he drank it was usually either a beer or you know and that was usually like a paps or something or it was whiskey sour so the whiskey sour you know, he would usually let me eat those Miracino cherries, and God knows I love those Miracino cherries. And so, um, but he would sometimes let me sip the foam off the top of those whiskey sours. And I'm four years old, you know, so so I get it. I get it. Hello, Mr. Utley. I bet you get that a lot, too, especially from Jimmy Buffett fans. Um, but, um, oh, my goodness gracious, yes. And So earlier when I alluded to the fact that I started drinking when I was 10 years old, my father didn't like to drink alone, and so he would go out and hide the fact that he was drinking from my grandmother and fix him a Jack and Coke, and so he didn't like to drink alone, so he would fix a little miniature Jack and Coke for me when I was 10 years old. But it was Georgia, and we know that that's really just anything goes down there. My goodness gracious. So, Cynthia, currently enjoying rye-based. Oh, yes. Oh, my God, I love rye. I absolutely love rye. Uh, you can get some hands on some Pisco. Yes, yes, yes. I love I love Pisco, too. And hello, Bobby Stewart. Hello, how I hope things are going fabulous for you over in Old Town Portsmouth. But I want to get back to actually some rosés uh, in Virginia. Um, you know, um, let me see here. Hold on one second. Because I do, I do love me some some Gabrielle Rouse, and you know, my brain is just not is just not thinking that clearly tonight. I'm more on the spirits mood and not so much in the wine mood right now. I'm finishing up on my next book. 
Uh, it's for the History Press. It's called Virginia Distill, 400 Years of Drinking in the Old Dominion. Hello, Alex Bell. Hello, Barrister. I hope things are going good for you. I'm glad that you haven't had to represent me in anything recently. Um, you know, but And this is not lemonade, by the way, but I'm not drinking and driving. And um, Oh, and Craig, yes, a good gin and tonic. Boy, howdy. Tell me what. You know, especially especially in the South, there is nothing better on a hot summer day than a good gin and tonic with a big old squeeze of lime in it. And is, I mean, make you see Jesus, I'll tell you what. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Of course, a lot of people see that anyway, don't they? But anyway, we're not going to go there, are we? So what questions do you have? Y'all are asking culinary questions. I know Karen asked one. We've had some crazy culinary questions on other on other, on other other um issues of this too, including what to do with some wrinkled limes and some wrinkled turnips too. And I think they were talking about actually fruits and vegetables. That wasn't a metaphor for something. But okay, so here we go. Trey, we're having sushi tomorrow for Mother's Day. That's cool. I love me some sushi. Any fun cocktails to make with sake that we have? Uh, we uh, it's uh, good solo. But can we make something? Yes, absolutely. So, um, you know, you can make a, a sake martini out of it. So uh, just replace the, um, the vodka or the gin, you know, um, with, the, with a really nice chilled sake. Just a really, um, what I like to do is just a, just a vermouth wash in it. Um, and then uh, with the sake, you know, just a lemon twist or something like that in it. Uh, also, uh, I think it'd be fun to take um, a little bit of sake and some plum wine and to almost make like a Cosmo out of something like that with it too. I think that would be a lot of fun. And then maybe um, do something with sake. Let's see, what could you do? What could you do? Maybe with some lychee fruit, get some lychee fruit and puree with the sake and then get it really nice and cold and then just pour that into a martini glass. Those are three ideas there. Maybe one of those will work. Let me know what they do and post them online too. Um, so Bobby, hey PH, no booze here. There was a wrap around line at the ABC store that drove you away. Well girl, you were Navy, go to the exchange. That's what we do. We go over here to Oceana. You don't pay any tax and then there's not really any lines there too. I mean, please. A day without booze is just a day. Yeah. Judy. Hello, Judy. Hey, Chef, have you been to... Have you been to Yes, Chef? I'm not sure what that is. I mean, I know the phrase Yes, Chef, but elaborate a little bit more, Judy. I'm not sure what that is. Hello, Paul David, our, my f fellow foodie. You, you, um, was it you that was bemoaning the fact that you should be in Hawaii right now? Was that you? I saw online earlier. We should all be somewhere right now, shouldn't we? It's going to come soon. We're all in this together. It all sucks right now. For some of us, it sucks a little bit more. For some others, it sucks even more. But, you know, we're all here. And right now, we're all having a good time, aren't we? And we're all, we're all congregating and um, commiserating and all of those good C words that we can say in a public forum. But uh, yeah, you know it's all it's all good. But there are our days of travel, whether it's travel near, or travel far, uh, are coming again very soon. I can't wait. If you can see, that's our that's our backyard out there. We have it set up just for me and Douglas, and um, can't wait to actually be able to have some friends over and to grill out and just uh, do some very simple simple entertaining and all too. So, Judy, Yes Chef is a supply store, a restaurant. So, no, I haven't been there, and I actually haven't heard about that. So, Judy, thank you for letting me know. I haven't been there, so I've got to actually um, find a way to make that over there. Karen, what do you think about doing a virtual Bloody, Muti, be, Bloody, Beauty, Bloody Mary beauty contest like we did years ago? People would send you a photo of the entry and we would have a people's choice prize i love that people if you did not make it out to the bloody mary beauty contest that we did live a couple of years ago oh my god it was unbelievable oh we had um uh, i can't even remember how many ingredients we had something like 10 different vodka you pay one one price we had something like 10 different vodkas you could choose from something like 10 or 15 different um, mixers you could choose from and then i mean there was something like a hundred different ingredients and um, garnishes you could choose from. And so you would make 
the most incredible garnishes. I mean, you'd stack up sliders and slices of pizza and chicken wings and gummy gummy worms, all kinds of crazy, crazy stuff. But then you put in hot sauces and you put in peppers and you put in this, you put in that, and then we'd take a photo. And so we had a panel of judges that would judge and there was a cash prize. And then the photos we put up, it was almost like a beauty contest. And then there was a people's prize. And I love the idea of doing something virtual too because I mean who doesn't love a good Bloody Mary and if you don't love a good Bloody Mary please feel free to hit the click the um well no don't 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 sign off right now we're having too good of fun but some people don't love Bloody Marys but oh my god I love Bloody Marys that's another you know I think back on all of the times that I actually started drinking very early in my life because my aunt who was basically raised as my sister. She was only 16 years older than me. My grandparents raised me by the time I was two months old. And so their daughter, who was 16 years older than me, was a flight attendant. And so she jet in from you know London, from Paris, from Athens, Greece, and from Rio de Janeiro. And we'd go down to the airport and we'd meet her. And so she'd always, you know, if she had enough time, would have a Bloody Mary before she'd get back on her plane and she'd jet off to, you know, to Los Angeles or to Tokyo or wherever she was flying next. And so she'd always let me eat the celery and the olives from the Bloody Mary. And again, I'm four or five years old. And so, of course, you know, they were saturated not only with the Bloody Mary mix, but also with the vodka. So does that explain a lot about me to y'all? Maybe I should tell this to my psychiatrist when I see him again on Thursday. Maybe, I don't know if he's watching or not. He's a friend of mine on here. Anyway. That deserves another sip here. So yes, Judy, you love the idea. I think that's a go. I think that's a go. We've had we've had a lot of fun. We've had a lot. Of, are you laughing at me, Lynn? Or are you laughing with me? Sometimes it doesn't really doesn't really make that much difference, does it? But uh, oh yeah. Now that but you know that's funny. Back in the '60s, I mean, talking about Mother's Day tomorrow. Of course, my birth mother. Um, I didn't meet my birth mother till I was 17 years old. That's a long, long, long story. I was that's why I was raised by my father's mother, but my birth mother. But you know, she was a, she was a um, she was a love child of the 60s, and the whole time she's pregnant with me, she's drinking martinis and she's smoking pot. So I think that explains a lot too. But it was the 60s, you know, kumbaya and all of that good stuff right there. Oh, I really wish you could smell this. Oh, I don't want to tip the camera too far because again. Like I said, I don't have on any pants. I only have on the shirt because this is home-based. It is kind of nice. In some ways, oh, we can't wait to get back and see everybody face-to-face -face and get into those wonderful restaurants. But, you know, I really kind of wish that the restaurants would allow, you know, people to go in with, you know, just a shirt and underwear or something. Wouldn't that be nice? If there's any restaurants out there, is Sean Pepe still watching? Sean, would you allow people, if they wore clean underwear, just to come in in a shirt and underwear and shoes? Because it's so comfortable. I mean, that's a, I, all day long I sit around just like that. It's so nice. I don't know. All right, Trey. Speaking of grilling out, what's your go? What's your go-to cut of steak? You know, I love a good New York strip. I just love a good New York strip. That's probably my go-to. We grill out quite a bit. I don't know if you can see the grill out there in our yard. I don't know if you could see. I don't know if you could see that or not. But anyway. Uh, so we, we do like to grill out quite a bit, um, but you know I, I like a lot I like a lot of different cuts of steak. So but but I do love a good uh, New York strip. What what about you, Trey? What do you like? Um, you know, there's just something you know what, whatever you call it, Delmonico, whatever you want to call it, but a good New York strip I think too. Uh, on my radio show every Friday evenings from uh, from uh, six until seven, uh, the Virginia Eats and Drink Show at AM seven ninety WNS. We recently had uh, Dylan Wakefield, uh, who owns Pendulum uh, Fine Meats in Norfolk, and that's, that's Dylan's favorite cut, too. There's just something about a New York strip. Um, but, you know, gosh, it's, you know, I think as long as you make sure that you get a good quality cut, you know. Um, but, you know, today what's really interesting is I had an all-vegan day, too. I mean, you know, I love, I love chicken and beef and pork. Um, but, um, but I, I, I love plant-based things too. I just love food. As long as food tastes good, um, I love food. Um, you know, I think it's all good. Hello, Tim Fink. It's good to see you tuning in too. Tim Fink is a, an amazing, amazing food photographer. 
and uh, hope everything is going good uh, for you. You're up, are you still up in New York? Uh, hope everything is good. And Sean Brickle, one of my favorite people too, the brainchild behind um, the uh, East Coast uh, She Crab Soup Classic. And uh, Craig, your favorite omelet. You know, I, um, I just love a good classic omelet. I just love a good classic omelet sometimes not even with cheese just with some you know some thin herbs in it or something like that uh just a very nice classic french omelet a little wet um folded over thin uh something that julia childs would be very proud of you know uh, i love that i'm going to actually be posting tomorrow uh, a classic French cheese omelet recipe uh, just in time if you want to get up early and cook something for mom from uh, Stella Palmiani from Cafe Stella. She was a guest on my radio show last night. Um, you know, if I want to go like um, American style omelet or something, then give me a good Western omelet. You know, give me that diced ham and those diced peppers and um, the onion and uh, some cheddar cheese or something. But you know, the older I get, I'm fi I just turned 55 uh, at the end of March, I like to try to eat a little bit lighter, and I also try to like to eat a little bit classic. I did go to school at Johnson & Wales, so I'm classically French trained, and um, so I kind of start falling back more toward some of the classic preparations of food, too. So as far as an omelet goes, uh, if it's good enough for Julia, good enough for me too except for the liver the chicken liver of course i do love i do love chicken. cynthia it's good to see you honey too mm -hmm. love to you I'll see you soon but um yeah you know but it's all good it's, again as long as food is good and um the main thing is is that you know a lot of times people you know a lot of times two people say like oh i'd love to have you over but i don't want to cook for you you know because i've been doing this for 25 years and i eat out on average 13, 14, 1500 different restaurants a year, you know, but you know, if food is cooked from the heart and food is cooked sincerely, you know, that's what it's all about. Food isn't rocket scientists, you know, science, you know, some people, you know, yes, they, they elevate it to an art form and good for them and good for them. That's where their passion is. That's where their heart is. And, and I'm so happy for them. Um, you know, and, and they, they do have their place and they make, they make a lot of people's special occasions very happy, but my goodness, you know, just let me sit down and have a really good meal, um, you know, with somebody around their dinner table and they're cooking, you know, some recipes, um, you know, that their mother made them or their grandmother made them and, you know, they're using maybe, um, you know, some, some jams or some jellies or some vegetables that they grew in their garden or that they put up themselves. And that's what it's all about. Food is the great unifier. That's really what it is. And if we just can't sit down around a big table and we can't come together and break bread together, you know, and put aside, you know, race and religion and sexual orientation and politics and all those other things just for a simple meal, then we really lost all hope. And that's one thing that I love so much about um, the food scene. Um, if we have any hope at all for any civility at all, it lies in, it lies in eats and drinks. It simply does. Well, it's 734, and I think that we, oh, Anthony Luce, I haven't seen you in a month of Sundays, boy. It's so good to see you online here. Cheers to you. But, you know, friends, it's time to start winding everything up. So it's been so good to see all y'all online. I just really enjoy um, being able to connect with y'all. Um, it's so special to come to you this way. Um, you know, I do the different cooking classes and wine classes, but I don't think we can ever really fully do something quite this intimate, which is funny this, considering because we're not in the same room, but there is a certain intimacy this way. And um, I just wish that y'all have a wonderful Mother's Day tomorrow. Tomorrow is also mine and Doug's um fourth anniversary so we're going to be celebrating in a special way tomorrow too and um you know i hope you'll have a great week ahead and we will all break to bread together someday face to face too i fully believe that so cheers to all of my friends out there and uh again be sure to support norfolk fest events get online at uh, festevents.org uh to any way that that uh that you can to help would be wonderful and i love all y'all Take care.